Hi, I'm Raymond Camden, a developer evangelist with Hero Technologies, and today I will be covering the last part of the 100 Days of Code with Here, uh, days 96 to 100. Be sure to check the links in the description below for more information and access to all of the source code. Let's start with day 96. Your task was to install the Data Hub CLI, ensure that it was uh, installed correctly, and then log in with it. To install the CLI, you will need NPM. You get NPM by installing Node.js. You absolutely do not have to be a Node developer to work with the CLI or to work with the REST-based APIs later. But installing Node gives you NPM, and NPM is a real handy tool for installing applications. So let's actually see how you would do that. npm install dash g to make it global, and then the package name, which is at here, slash CLI. Now, I won't hit enter for this because it'll take about 30 or so seconds to install. But once that is done, once you've installed that, you can confirm by running here dash v. And this will output the version of the CLI. As of the time I'm doing this video, it's 1.51, but it may be a different later when you run it. The last thing I'll need to do is to log in. I can use a freemium account that I can get at developer.here.com, and I log in via here space configure. It's gonna ask me for my email address first. Type that in. and then my password. After that, it will ask me to pick a project if I have more than one. And then that is it, and that completes day 96. So for day 97, your task was to find some geospatial data and upload it to Data Hub. Now the best data, or one of the best uh, forms of data will be GeoJSON. If you go to the National Park System, you can actually get a list of every single national park in that system in a GeoJSON format. You can see it here in my browser, and I've actually downloaded that file to my terminal. And I could see it there in national-parks.geojson. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to create a space. You can think of a space as like a database for your data. And I'm going to do that with the CLI by doing here XYZ, create, and I'm going to give it a title of NPS data. I could also give it a optional description if I want. So this is going to create that space and then give me a ID. I'm going to copy that ID. And then for that blank space, I'm gonna go ahead and upload my data. And I'm gonna use here, XYZ, upload, give it that space ID I just copied, dash F for file name, and then pass in the GeoJSON file that I downloaded. We'll run this. It's a uh, bit under 400 or so records, so it'll take a few seconds to upload. And see here, it took two seconds. And just to confirm that it worked, I'm gonna do here, X, Y, Z, show, and then that ID again. And this will print out all of the data from the space. So it takes a second to download, and you can see rows and rows and rows of the parks that I uploaded. For day 98, your job was to use the REST-based API uh, to return all of the features in the space, essentially the same thing that the CLI was doing. Now, we have extensive documentation about how to use the API. And to work with this, you will need a token. In the links below, you'll see uh, how to get to the token manager. That's where you can generate a token value that will securely connect to the API and get your data. I'm not gonna show that on the video, obviously, because you would see all of my keys, but again, we'll have that link in the video description below. 
So once I have access to that, once I have that token, I could use any language at all to work with the API. I'm going to use Node.js again because I am familiar with it and I'm going to use the iterate endpoint. What this will do is essentially allow me to get pages of data or if I want, get all of the data from my space. So I begin by loading in a uh, token value. Again, that's that security uh, uh, value. That is loaded via a .env file that is not in the GitHub repo because it has my particular credentials in there. I also have a space ID value in there that represents the space that I uploaded the GeoJSON data to. I'm using node fetch to do a simple HTTP request. I convert it to JSON and then I output it. So if we go into day 98 at the terminal, use node to run app.js, we should see a lot of output. And I could have done more with that output. I could have shown some of the data in there. I just use console.log as a quick and easy way of grabbing all the values. For day 99, your task was a bit different compared to day 98. You were asked to use the REST-based API again, but this time you were asked to find uh, features that are near a particular location. The API support multiple different ways of finding features within a particular area. You could pass a bounding box, you could pass a polygon. You could also say, you know, based on a center point, give me items within a certain radius. All of this is all documented again in the API. And like the previous day, I used Node.js to solve it. The endpoint is going to be the slash spatial one. I have some data to specify, you know, where I'm going to begin my search from. In this case, I specify the latitude and longitude value for New Orleans, Louisiana. I also pass a radius, which is in meters. And you can see all of these values are simply added to the end of the URL. So if we run this, we should find the national parks that are within 5,000 meters and again in a circular radius uh, from New Orleans. And we could see that there's only one. And if I were to expand that radius, make it 50,000 or 500,000, then more and more would show up. For your last task, you were asked to use our JavaScript maps that nice library that allows you to create um, interactive maps for the browser. Your ask was to take that library and integrate the data hub data, your space, your national parks that you uploaded, all that, all that data into a map. I'm going to show you how it looks when it's done, and then I will show you the code behind it. This is our map. All of the green dots represent a national park. Uh, there's no interactivity for these parks, but you could absolutely add, you know, when I click it, show a bubble of some sort, show the data. You could definitely do a lot more than just show it, but let's look at how that code works. All right, I'm going to scroll up to the top here. So most of what you see in this file is boiler uh, boilerplate JavaScript map type stuff. So I have a key and this key is restricted to my domain. So it's safe to uh, share. I also have a access token and I talked about the tokens earlier. I created a read only token that's safe to use within JavaScript. And then I have a space ID that represents uh, the information that uh, for my uh, national parks, that GeoJSON I uploaded. The ID value here is a bit different than the earlier one because I created this demo uh, a bit earlier. So once I've done that, I create essentially a default map. I'm centering on America roughly, uh, closer to where I live basically. And then I've added a few things like default behavior and default zoom controls. Everything up to line 56 is basically simple map work. After line 56, 
I begin to work with Data Hub. Now the APIs here refer to XYZ, that's an older name of the product, but I essentially create an instance of the XYZ service. From that, I create a provider, and this is where essentially I'm linking up the data. You can see I pass in my space ID. I then create a layer based on that provider. And then the last thing I do is just add that layer to my map. And we'll look at that one more time so you can see it. And I'll zoom back out. And now what's cool is that if I work with my space, if I add more features or if I take some away, then I can be sure that this interactive map would be updated with the latest data. All right. I hope that was helpful to you. If you want to follow 100 Days of Code with here from the beginning, we have a link to the GitHub repo in the description field below, as well as links to all the blog posts. Thank you.